Hello, Gemini. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. Oh, your reading is appropriately nebulous, <laughs> perhaps. I've been sitting here for a little while, mulling it over, feeling into it, seeking clarity. And yet I feel as if you or, or the Gemini energy is actually finding more clarity for itself. We begin with consciousness. The frequency of consciousness supports our ability to focus our attention on all the multi-dimensional aspects that show up so we can include them in our reality. Certainly, very Gemini. And the Neptune vision. Now, Neptune is currently in Pisces, squaring Gemini. And I was struck, one, by the, the color matching going on. But there's also this sense of, you know, this is sort of diffuse looking and then it becomes focused and concentrated. Which is interesting because that isn't how one thinks of, normally thinks of Neptune. Neptune is this you know, big gas planet, uh, expansive, dreamlike, You know, it's not, there's no solidity or focus, doesn't really, are not words that you, that you associate with Neptune. And yet, there is the fact that Saturn is currently in Pisces, lending his energy and certainly one would use the word focused with Saturn. Solid with Saturn. And there's also the fact that Neptune is moving retrograde at the moment. So perhaps engaged in an alternative expression of himself. First underlying is this Queen of Wands. She is also not in the least a nebulous energy. Aries. Focused, singular, passionate. able to, you know, this Neptune vision, to the ability to take the vision and bring it into reality. We often talk about Aries as the first sign, but the zodiac is a circle, not really having a beginning or an end. going around and around. So if one thinks of Pisces as this Neptunian, Jupiterian space where an idea maybe is birthed and then is brought into being, starting with Aries, the spark, and then moving into Taurus where it may be brought into tangible form and then so on around. 
passing through Gemini. which might occasion an examination of all the different parts. Is there something missing? Is there more information we can add? This, this multiplicity of Gemini. However, Gemini is not the only energy in your chart. And if you kind of, you know, if you focus yourself just in one space of your chart, you can create problems for yourself. And with this Eight of Swords, I feel like it's been too much. That there's too much information too many options. Gathering so much that it becomes overwhelming. These eight swords, not so much as self-imprisoning thoughts, but just as an excess of data. the continued gathering, search, exploration, becoming overwhelming. And so I think that you made, that you are ready, maybe you haven't done it yet, perhaps since we're here in the reading, that this is about to happen. this kind of um, going back to just the basics, to the beginning. With this magician here, um, you know, just the feeling of, of one, that the card is one. There's this single figure standing very um, complete in herself. That it was just too much. That you need that you need to kind of come in to perhaps pull all of your energy back. Uh, that's a meditation you sometimes find uh, online, this idea of pulling your energy back from all the places where maybe you've left bits of yourself. where you sent yourself out exploring. Just pull all of that back. And then this Six of Swords. Moving, moving to another way of thinking. So I don't believe this is leaving where you are. I think it's actually the reverse. I think you are coming home. I think you are, and not just coming home, I think you are choosing to be home. There's this fertility goddess, I'm not going to attempt her name, 
Uh, she's a Native American goddess, uh, Navajo and Apache, I think, if the internet is to be relied on. But what's interesting about her, it's interesting actually that she's listed here as fertility and she is, um, she is a creational goddess. But what's interesting about her is her ability to change. She can be, you know, very young and very old within the same day. If she walks east, you know, she kind of meets her younger self and becomes young and then vice versa. So she has this ability to be many things. And at the same time, she very much belongs in her particular space. She is a goddess of this culture, of this space in the world and in time. And she is, she does stand for the Empress in this deck, uh, who is about home and belonging. So with this messenger of fire standing here on this hill, I imagine overlooking some land, I, it's like you've been a guest. Like you have been a guest or a traveler all the time. That you haven't thought of yourself as, you know, as being at home anywhere. That even if you've lived in your home for, you know, 10 or 20 years, that you didn't think of yourself as really being there, committed. That you've been a guest, a traveler, up until this point. that the need to be able to move at any moment, you know, from a job, from a relationship, from a place, um, from a line of work, from a spiritual practice, that you needed this to feel like you could move at any time. But there's another part of you, perhaps, that is ambivalent about that. We have this messenger of air, page of air, And there's a sense of wanting closeness, wanting connection, wanting things to no longer be so nebulous. And geese are migratory birds. They do travel, but they travel, right? They, they come and go to the same places. And here, as you're, as you're hugging this goose, I think there has been a longing to relax yourself, to no longer be ready at a, right, to drop everything at a moment's notice. And so now we have the Great Mother the Empress in this deck, 
showing up. And she is very much here in this place. She does not get up and run away at a moment's notice. She is committed to this land that she is in. Now it may be that this kind of choice, the choosing something, committing to something, has felt uh, dangerous or risky to you that you're right you're going to be trapped you're going to you know if you do want to move it's going to just be a big thing that maybe you'll be required to stick around even in difficult times that maybe you'll have to solve other people's problems. And commitment is, does kind of involve some of that, whether it's a person or a job, say. And you can absolutely spend a lot of time in a space without really being there and committed to it. You can be a guest for a really long time, right? It's an energetic mental thing. I was actually listening to something this morning, um, someone talking about marriage. And I do, you know, I have experience knowing people who were together for a long time and then they got married and then they were divorced in a really short period of time. Something happened when they made that official commitment, it, it like it triggered something, made them feel trapped and then they you know, kind of manufactured and manifested all of these circumstances that led them to split. So it may be that you've had this experience, either with marriage or with a job, or, um, you know, maybe you had a job and then when you signed the contract or you, you know, agreed to full-time hours or something, that everything changed. and you wanted to run away and start something new. So there are these, there are these fears, but there's also something, and I think you're seeing it now, something beautiful about committing, about choosing, choosing to really be somewhere, choosing to be home rather than to be the tourist, the visitor. And here, this is such an interesting ace of air of today with this spider creating these silk strings for this harp. That the new idea actually involves this creational effort, this choosing, right? The spider has chosen this place to create a home, to create their web in this space. And that that is what 
completes the harp. That gives the harp its ability to make music is this choice. And so now the King of Wands. And the Kings are traditionally fixed energy. Uh, he belongs to your neighbor, Leo. And there is a relationship with Gemini and Leo via Venus at the current moment. In Venus's current cycle, and the Venus cycle lasts for a long time, um, this may not change in your lifetime, but there is a connection. Leo, Gemini, Aries, Capricorn, and Scorpio. The five points of Venus. So there is this Venusian connection between these signs. And we've met Aries now. Here's Leo. So this fiery energy. This um, this uh, leadership energy, that's the word I want. And a leader chooses, chooses to be home. A leader is committed. And there's this moon energy, which is very interesting to me, because um, she's beckoning. And this, I think, is the moon as home. Come home, Gemini. Be home. Page of Wands, again, Herald of or a page of swords rather, herald of swords. So there is, there is a little caution still. I think this is my most sort of cautious page of swords in the decks that I have looking over her shoulder a little tentatively. But, but I think that the feeling is uh, is changing for you. That you're seeing the benefits more clearly. Six of Pentacles. Reciprocity. And actually in a different deck that's out here as well, um, the Six of Pentacles comes out as a potlatch tree. Right, where people can contribute. Where you can give and where you can receive. If you have extra, you go and you leave at the potlatch tree, and if you need, you take. And that this, you know, within a community goes around through the different seasons as different people's lives shift and change. So that there is, right, there's this beautiful reciprocity to being really at home in a space. And then the Knight of Pentacles. This, um, I mean, he is totally committed. The beauty of finishing something. Um, the beauty of being of service. He is Virgo's 
court card. And you also have a relationship to Virgo. You are both home to Mercury. So there's a, right, there's a beauty in this, a real um, creativity. in choosing to be home, in creating home. And then the Eight of Swords repeats. And here there's, there's sort of just this one sword at her back. But all she has to do, I think, is to step forward and that sword will slice right through her bonds and she'll be free. Just a, right, the one step forward. Something that's been coming up in the readings is some sort of encounter. Some meeting with either a person or an energy or an event that is going to create change. And this is showing up for you here in this card, right? You live here in this hut that's outside the perimeter and someone is coming for you. <laughs> These people have shown up, they're knocking on the door, coming to invite you to come and shift your home to be with the group. You have, you have isolated yourself, even if it's only mentally and energetically. That you, right, you're somebody who, when people meet you, they just you know, their internal intuition tells them that up until this point, you've had one foot out the door. That you're always apparently ready to get up and go. And maybe this has served you in many ways, given you all sorts of different experiences and, um, Maybe you've met a whole lot of people, but now, now you've been sending out some of these, I want to stay signals. And those signals have been heard. So someone or some event perhaps is going to invite you more openly to stay. Um, it might be an offer, personal or business related. Might be somebody you meet, you know, maybe you get a new next door neighbor. who kind of draws you out into a more communal experience. And then this eight of sacred circles, really building a life, building a sacred life. by choice. And I think that this doesn't necessarily mean that if you're somebody who travels a lot, that that will stop. Maybe it will decrease, or maybe you'll be traveling now with some other person or persons. But your attitude is going to change. Your attitude about the notion of home 
about being still somewhere, about not being a visitor. I mean, it might mean that you, that you buy a property wherever you are. You know, maybe you rent not because it's economically advantageous, but because you don't, right? You want to be able to move at any moment. And so now we have a different six of swords. New swords planted here. This sense of stillness. Of ease where you are. And here, your card, the lovers. And here coming out as commitment. It may be to another person, to a career, to a job, to a home, to a city, maybe just to a way of living. To to maybe making more of a home for yourself. You know, if you're somebody whose apartment is largely empty and has maybe a couple of pieces of furniture and, you know, water and coffee in the refrigerator. <laughs> that you, maybe your focus switches to creating more of a home space for yourself. You know, and again, that doesn't mean buying a ton of stuff. It means kind of putting your energetic imprint into a space. Making, right, when people come into your apartment, do they feel like they're like in a hotel? Or into a sample apartment? Or do they feel like it's a home? Does a space feel like somebody's home? regardless of, you know, how much stuff is in it. And then we have the Prince of Cups. And this really is about vulnerability, right? Because to make a commitment, to make a choice, is to become vulnerable. If you can't just, you know, pack a bag and be gone, you know, give a week's notice and you're out. There's a vulnerability in that because now you, you become a part of something. You become enmeshed. The you, you find yourself being as concerned for the well-being of the other as you are for yourself. It's emotionally vulnerable to really care, to be invested in something. And the Knight of Cups is so open to vulnerability, right? He's got his cup, it's out, it's visible, right? He's ready to, to give it to other people, to pour out of it into others, to let others pour into it. Now the advice, Gemini, <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Um, not so much the underlying, that's Right, that's cool, that makes sense. Collaboration, joining up with other people, like really, to create something. And this Queen of Wands showing up again underneath. 
right? Totally makes sense. But then the next four cards. <laughs> High Priestess. Emperor. Magician. And the Lovers. All oh, major arcana. Powerful energies. And I say this is not so much advice. I think the advice is this Three of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. And the, you know, the general, sort of the whole reading, right? Taking that step forward to free yourself, um, you know, answering the door when these people come to invite you into their community. All right, making, making the choice is the advice sort of in this reading. And these guys are the result. This is the possibility of what will open up for you if you make this choice. Um, High Priestess connection, real connection to your intuitive knowing, to connection with your fellowship with the invisible world, with any paranormal, if we want to call them otherworldly gifts that you have, psychic gifts, abilities, um, magic that exists for you, access to that, both through the High Priestess and the Magician. Um, access to these Emperor energies, to be a leader, to be a creator, to be, um, to really know how to delegate, how to uh, inspire others. Courage. To do things that maybe you, you know, yeah, wanted to do. You know, perhaps courage to start your own business or the courage to have a child. I think that takes a lot of courage, really. I'm being a parent. I am not a parent, but I have witnessed that being a parent is really, right? That's being really vulnerable. Um, to be uh, creational, to manifest what you want. Because if you're constantly moving, if you constantly have one foot on the threshold ready to bolt, <laughs> if you live your life as a tourist and a visitor, you don't have access to all of your power. Right, you don't have real ease. You don't have the ability to access that full connection to your own soul and the source of all things as well as to other people, to the amazing generative power of community and other people. And then the lovers. Choosing from love rather than fear. Choosing to stay somewhere because you love it, because it feels good. not needing to leave at a moment's notice. So 
So Gemini, ready to choose to be home. I think it's gonna be great, Gemini. I look forward to seeing what happens from here. And I'll see you next time. So long, Gemini.